this is for of course my stat students and it's not only one class I think I have four classes and this is the first lecture uh, after we went on remote education so this lecture is about random variables and uh, probability distributions it's uh, kind of weird for me to to do a lecture in front of the camera but I think we're gonna get used to this and we are gonna have our uh, zoom conferences too so we're all working very hard to get there hope everybody is fine at this point so let's start and you guys send me your ideas uh, tell me how this worked out for you and <clears throat> you're gonna try to make it better and better all right guys let's talk about random variables and probability distribution Now first, random variables. What is a random variable? A random variable is a variable <coughs> and it's written as a x. So And let me tell you who's possible values. I'll tell you the details about this but the first thing I want you to know there are two types of random variables number one we have discrete random variables Now what are discrete random variables? So these are countable numbers like one, two, three. Or if kind of if I graph it for you on the graph if I go one, two, three, one, two, three. You pick one, then you pick two, and you pick three. You don't pick anything in between. Continuous random variables are usually take infinite possible of numbers so for example that that could be height weight or amount of sugar in uh, in coffee so if I show it to you graphically by the one two three one two three you stop at start at one and you go to three all the way no gaps and I'll tell you how these are used so now we use random variables to make probability distributions i'm missing some letters here let's see uh talking about probability distributions now i want you to remember a probability distribution can be a table or a formula so and we're going to start with discrete random variables and uh, make uh, probability distribution table so for probability distribution 
couple of things I want you to know when we have probability distribution distribution there are two conditions number one probability of each random variable has to be between 0 and 1 and number 2 when we add all the probabilities this is the sum of the probabilities we should get 1 now you're going to see this in an example much better for example let me put that there so I can show you for example let's try. You don't have to write this down because uh, you can just uh, run this over and over and listen to this lecture. But example, something we have seen before, rolling a die. Now if I make the table when we roll a die, let's see what the random variables are. So we call them x and of course of x. So in this case, if I pick them one by one, we know we can have one, two, three, four, five, and six. Now let's get the probability of each one. What's the probability that I roll a die and it shows one? And we all know that's one over six, one over six, one over six, one over six, one over six and 1 over 6. Now if I ask you is this a probability distribution you need to check these two conditions and let's go ahead and do that. Number one, do we have each probability to be between 0 and 1? And the answer is yes. Number two, if I add all the probabilities, one plus one plus one plus one plus one six times of course it's going to be some of the probabilities are six over six which is one so this is a probability distribution now let's see what we can do with the probability distribution we want to have a probability distribution we can find the mean the board is getting dirty so we can find the mean, so number one, the mean, and that's mu. Remember mu, I told you in class, this is, uh, you pronounce that mu, and that's the population mean. Since probability is very general, we always use the population notation. And that's sum of x times p of x. And number two, we can find the standard deviation. And that's sigma, again, population notation, we call that sigma. And that's square root of sum of x squared times p of x minus the mean squared. Now for, uh, just to refresh your memories, remember when we had sample, for sample we said the mean was uh, x bar and the standard deviation was s. That was the notation for the sample, but for population we used mu and sigma. Let's calculate those. And then I'll tell you how we can use this too. So, Let's see what we need. I'm going to show you the hand calculations and uh, later on you can use your calculators to do this. We know that it's very fast. We need x times p of x. So x times p of x. x times p of x is that times that. So 1 times 1 over 6 is 1 over 6. That is 2 over 6. 3 over 6, 4 times 1 over 6 is 4 over 6, 5 times 1 over 6 is 5 over 6, and 6 times 1 over 6 is 6 
over 6. We need the sum of these numbers. So let's see, that's uh, 3, 6, 10, 15 plus 6 is 21 over 6. And if I reduce that, we're going to get uh, 7 over 2, which is 3.5. So the mean is 3.5. What's the meaning of that? If I take a die and roll it 100 times or 1000 times and if I average all those numbers, the number is going to be very close to 3.5. So that's the mean or sometimes uh, we say the mean is the same thing as E of X which is the expected, expected value. So I'll talk more about that. But let's go and calculate the standard deviation. To what do we need for standard deviation? We need x squared. Then after that we need x squared times p of x. So let me do that. 1, 2 squared is 4, 3 squared is 9, 4 squared is 16. 5 squared is 25, 6 squared is 36. x squared times p of x is that number times the probability. So the first one is just 1 over 6. 4 times 1 over 6 is 4 over 6. 9 times 1 over 6 is 9 over 6. 16 times 1 over 6 is 16 over 6. 25 times 1 over 6 is 25 over 6 and 36 times 1 over 6 is 36 over 6. We need the sum. If you add all these numbers, you get 91 over 6. Usually you do that for me in the classroom, but I have to do that myself now. So let's see this. So we the mean is 3.5 and the standard deviation is square root of let's get those numbers x squared times p of x is 91 over 6 and that's minus and we can just put 7 over 2 which is 3.5 squared and if you do that let me go one more step so this is 91 over 6 minus 49 over 4 and let's see the LCD we can say it's of 6 and 4 is 12 so that times uh, 2 is 182 minus then we have the other one and I did that to get 49 anyway if you do that you get a number approximately 1.7 so I have the mean and I have the standard deviation. We're going to do the same thing that we did for numerical data. So for numerical data, once we found the mean, I think I can erase this table. And again, you guys can review the video. So let's see, we're going to draw a line and we're going to put the mean in the middle. And we remember we had the mean plus one standard deviation, the mean plus two standard deviations, and the mean plus three standard deviation. To the left, the mean minus one standard deviation, the mean minus two standard deviations, and the mean minus three standard deviations. I've got these numbers uh, for you, so it's 3.5 was the mean, we know that. This is 5.2, 6 6.9, 8.6, 1.8, 0.1, and negative 1.6. Double check the calculations uh, on your own. So let's make sure these are the right numbers. 
Now, when we go plus or minus two standard deviations, remember we said this was the usual range, and after that, it's unusual. On usual. What does it mean? If I roll a die, is that usual to get a number between 0.1 and 6.9? And I know these are decimal, but the usual number is from 1 to 6, and all, there are, all those numbers are here. And it's unusual to get 8, but it's impossible in this case. But sometimes, uh, when we say unusual, that means the, if it's a probability, the probability is very, very low. But rolling a die is straightforward, it's impossible. We can't get that. By doing these calculations, we see that one to six are in the usual range. And after that, any number is unusual. In this case, it's impossible. Now, if you want to use your calculators to do that, what uh, you can do just, uh, you can take X's and put them in L1 and you can take P of the probabilities on the table and put them in L2 and the usual thing you learn. You go to one bar stats and the, the calculator is going to give you the mean and the standard deviation. Let me put one for you. You can try this on your own until our next video. So let's say if I make a table, I want to say X of x, 1, 2, 3, 4, and that's good enough. I'm going to put point 0.1 here, point 0.2 here, and I'm going to put point 0.3 here. These are the probabilities. Think about it. What should go for number 4? Very important. You can't just put any number. That's point 0.3 plus point 0.3 is point 0.6. The sum has to be 1, so this has to be point 0.4. Let's see if we are right. 1 plus 3 is 3 plus 3 is 6, and that's 0.4. What I want you to do after this lecture, find the mean and the standard deviation by hand and use your calculators too. This video may might be short, but we're going to have more of this. Have a good night or good day. I'll see you in our next video or in our Zoom conference.